Okay, uh, with tonight's match between Costa Rica and New Zealand, uh, World Cup qualifying for Qatar is now complete. Um, Costa Rica beat New Zealand 1-0 in the World Cup qualifier playoff. Um, scrappy performance uh, by Costa Rica. A brave performance by New Zealand. And there were some very controversial decisions. VAR has been involved in this game. I felt the referee had a poor performance. He let too much go in the first half. Um, that led to some frustration from both Costa Rica and New Zealand. And I think that contributes to Winston Reid losing his temper completely and losing his emo- losing control of his emotions, getting subbed off. And Barbarousis's red card, it should have been a straight red anyway. It should never have gone to VAR. Uh, it was a weak decision by the referee. That is late. That's studs. That's ankle. Uh, and that's lucky that's not a leg break, in my opinion. Uh, the disallowed goal for New Zealand. Um, I think that's a 50-50. If it's a 50-50, then is it clear and obvious? Uh, I've seen them giving us fouls against the Costa Rican player. I've seen them giving us fouls against the New Zealand player. I've seen them giving us play on, which is what was given on the field. The finish by Chris Wood is brilliant. Um, but VAR's got involved. Now, let's hope VAR is as consistent as that in the World Cup then. If that's the, the standard we're going by for 50-50 contact and a 50-50 challenge... Um, then let's see that consistency take place in the World Cup in November and December, in my opinion. But let's discuss, let's break the game down. Uh, Joel Campbell's gone. Remember him at Arsenal? Flattered to deceive at Arsenal? He's pulled out the goods here for Costa Rica. Um, his finish is as scrappy as this Costa Rica's performance. Um, if he gets a clean, flush finish on that, a pure finish on that, a pure contact, Oli Sale in the New Zealand goal saves it. Because it's a scrappy, bobbling contact, and it's not flush, it's not pure, it goes past the goalkeeper. Honestly, if Joel Campbell gets a perfect contact on that, Ollie Sale, the New Zealand the Kiwi goalkeeper, saves it. And Joel Campbell's scrappy finish, as I say, sums up Costa Rica's play in this game. They were far from their best. Uh, we know Costa Rica can be better than this. But if you look at their World Cup qualifying group, they finished fourth. Canada, USA and Mexico were all above them. They were terrible at the beginning of World Cup qualifying. Couldn't win any of their first four games. Uh, but they had a good second half to qualifying to, to make the playoff stages uh, in the intercontinental playoff stages to, to, to make this game. Now, on the New Zealand side of things, they, they were the better side for lengthy periods. Uh, Kaylor Navas in the Costa Rica goal has pulled off a series of saves this evening uh, that has actually Kept it at 1-0 to Costa Rica. Um, great double save from Chris Wood in the first half. At, low at his feet. Uh, bravely at his feet. Now, the goal that's disallowed, as I say, I've seen them given. I've seen fouls given against the uh, the Costa Rican defender. I've seen fouls given against the New Zealand attacker. And I've seen fouls you know, not given, play on, which is what was the decision on the field. The reaction of the Costa Rican players... No fan likes the crowding around the referee, um, but the VAR was going to get involved regardless if the players reacted in that fashion. Um, but I felt the referee had a poor performance tonight. He let too much go. Um, had he stamped his authority earlier, I think some of the the, 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 the spiteful challenges, then there were quite a few in this game, that didn't even get a yellow card. Um, and we'll get to Barbarossa's yellow card that ended up being a red later on. That seemed to inspire. Uh, the uh, Kiwis, by the way. They seem to play better with 10 men than with 11. They were playing pretty well with 11, so that was interesting. Uh, so, yeah, Chris Wood's goal is disallowed. It's a brilliant finish, by the way. Uh, Burnley must be kicking themselves for letting him, for letting him go to Newcastle because it's actually contributed to their relegation, ironically, from the Premier League. Uh, Chris Wood, um, great pickup by Newcastle. Let's hope he has a really good first full season um, uh, up, up at St James's Park. It's a shame we're not going to see him at the World Cup because he's a very, very good player. Um, half-time, 1-0, Costa Rica are hanging on a bit. Uh, second half, they start on the front foot the first couple of minutes, and then it's New Zealand on the better side. And again, Kayla Navas uh, in the Costa Rican goal was pulled up again, some good saves, um, you know, good clear, clearing punches, good catches. He's been very, he, he, he is their best player. Kayla Navas is Costa Rica's best player. There's a reason why he's won three Champions Leagues. There's a reason why he's playing the top clubs in Europe, you know. He's playing at Real Madrid. He's now playing, obviously, at PSG. Um, Kalon Navas is uh, an underrated goalkeeper, in my opinion. And he was Costa Rica's best player. Now, the Barbarossa's red card, he's only just come on as a substitute. 
it's late, it's missed time, studs are high, studs are showing, um, and it is lucky that it isn't a, a more serious injury. Uh, the player does play on, he does get up, he's a bit sore. I've seen legs break with lesser contact. Uh, I think it's a credit to the playing surface that um, the Costa Rican player, his, his leg is, um, his studs don't stick in the ground, I think. That, that's If that's an older playing surface, let's say 20, 20 years, 25 years ago, that is a leg break. And we're having a different discussion about this game. Um, the fact that the referee on the field has given that as a yellow, uh, considering there was a, an equally as bad challenge later on by a Costa Rican player that was two-footed, and he definitely leaves the ground, and he only gets a yellow, and there's no VAR, in my opinion, VAR's had a bit of a inconsistent moment there, because Barbarossa's one is not, technically is not as bad. It's late and it's mistimed. Uh, I don't think there's any malicious intent. I mean, Barbarossa, he holds his hand up when he's given the initial booking. Um, VAR get involved. It's, it, that's when the, the New Zealand players are feeling that actually there's too much being let go in this game. There's been some, fat, you know, there's been some niggly, spiteful challenges from both sides. But this is where I think the referee having a poor game, the emotion, Winston Reid does lose uh, his control of his emotions. He ends up getting booked for dissent, and shortly after that, he gets subbed off. Um, but he, the, some of the New Zealand players are getting clearly frustrated with the, the referee. Um, and you could argue rightly so, wrongly so. What gets me, though, is in the last five minutes, there is a young Costa Rican forward. There is a two-foot challenge in there. Um, he, he, he dives in with both feet. Uh, it's probably a worse foul for intent than Barbarousis' red card. Um, and, you know, Latin American football has this kind of spite and nastiness in its game. I will say this, though. Um, sometimes I like a, a game with a bit of niggle and a bit of passion like that because last night's game, Australia-Peru didn't have that. It didn't have that um, spice about it. It didn't have that energy and commitment about it. And you could argue that maybe it cooled down a little bit quicker tonight. Yes, it was still warm when they kicked off. It's the same conditions. Maybe both sides are prepared for the game you can acclimatisation better than Australia and Peru. Um, and there seemed to be more energy in tonight's game. There was a faster pace to the night's, tonight's game. The New Zealand side is actually surprisingly young. Uh, there's a lot of players under the age of 23. Most, uh, a fair few of this starting line played at the Olympics last year, so there are age restrictions involved with that. Only three overage players allowed in an in a Olympic squad. So there's a very young Kiwi side. Costa Rica, very experienced Costa Rican side. Some real veteran players in their late 30s, which could have contributed to, again, Costa Rica's stuttering style of play this evening. You know, they, they were the favourites going in. New Zealand, you know, rank outside underdogs in this one. No pressure on New Zealand to get a result. If they win, that's, that's a, you know, a, a miracle story. Costa Rica, there's a lot of expectation on this Costa Rican team. They didn't have the best qualifying campaign in the main um, CONCACAF qualifying group they've had to do it via playoffs which they've never had to do before to get to the World Cup and they had a scrappy performance uh, now how much the again the temperature and the weather conditions played into that you know that's that's tonight's game did show more pace more energy um, there was more pace the players will say the, the play and the pace of the game didn't drop off as much as it did last night now whether it cooled down a bit quicker tonight uh, or both squads being more acclimatised to the conditions, being in Qatar and training, having that extra day, maybe have uh, an impact. Um, there were a few players who did look a bit a bit leggy by the end. Um, and, you know, you could argue that maybe the heat contributed to some of the rash challenges because when it is hot and you get hot and bothered, you know, emotions can actually get the better of you. Um, we, we've seen in, in, in hot, humid conditions, some of the fire is... It's, it's a known fact that actually in hot, humid conditions, temperament goes out the window. And I think there's a little bit of that tonight. So, look, it was a more entertaining game than last night. We actually got a goal in regulation. Uh, it was done in the 90 minutes. Uh, so it was not a late, late finish like it was last night. It's, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it, as I'm recording this, it's already nearly midnight over there, uh, over in Qatar. And, and you could argue Costa Rica did defend quite stoutly. Um, but you could also argue New Zealand were the better side, the better side lost. So there you go. That's my opinion on the game. I think they are, 
I'm, I'm not. I don't think the referee had a great game. I think VAR got one of the Costa Rican bookings wrong. It should actually have also been a red for a two-footed challenge. I think the disallowed goal is debatable. I think that is a key turning point in the game. The Barbarossa's red card, it should have been red card straight away. It should have never had to go to VAR. I think the referee's got that decision wrong. Let's hope the quality of refereeing is better in the World Cup than what we saw tonight. I think the referee had a poor game. Um, but Joel Campbell, great movement uh, to get in the box. As I say, if he gets a crisp, clean finish, Oli Sale saves that in New Zealand goalkeeper. But Kalor Navas was Costa Rica's best player, possibly the best player uh, on the pitch tonight uh, with some of the saves he's pulled off and, and his commanding attitude in his box. So there we go. That's my review on Costa Rica New Zealand. We have all 32 teams now qualified for the World Cup. So I will be a preview, a preview of the 2022 Qatar World Cup. I'll go break it down group by group uh, in a couple of days time. So thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.